betting opportunities. Good luck. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy, su and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck. Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck.
Our next football commentary match is getting ever nearer, so why not take the opportunity of having a bet on the match? Whether you're interested in betting on the match result, the first player to score, the last scorer, correct score, double result, total goals market, handicap betting, or any other of our exciting markets, it's fun to be involved. Don't forget, when the match kicks off, you can sit back and enjoy superb independent studio commentary while also enjoying our in-play betting opportunities. Good luck. Last week in the game against Everton, and Matinho comes in for him. The side in full, Ruchin Gold, Matinho, Ekdal, Esteve, and Asingon at the back four. Foster, Josh Cullen, the captain, Berg, Brun Larsen, a midfield four, and Odsbert and Dastro Fafana, the leading two up front. Looks like it's a 4 4 2 for Vincent Company side, although the former Manchester City man, he will be serving that touchline bounce, so he will be touchline side for his side this afternoon. Craig Bellamy, the one who will be taking the reins on their sidelines, whereas Brighton suffered a real tough 3-0 home defeat to Arsenal last week, and they make a couple of changes. Lamptey and Nciso were out due to injury. And Beltman and Jao Pedro come in for them. The side in full for Bruggen in goal, Beltman, Van der Heck, Dunk, captain in, Estupin on the back four, Baleba and Ross the midfield two, with Pedro on the left, Adingra on the right, Day just in behind Danny Welbeck, who is leading the line. 19 first attempt. Real big game for both Brighton. They're still chasing European hopes. Three points can push them further to West Ham and Manchester United. Burnley, three points. It won't move them out of 19, but it will get them close to survival in the Premier League. Trying to hunt down Luton and Nottingham Forest with six points above them before this afternoon's action. As the three o'clock Premier League games, they're imminently underway. Listening to Burnley versus Brighton coverage. Kickoff is imminent. Kickoff at Turf Ball is fastly approaching where Burnley sits in 19. Welcome Brighton, who sit in 10. Both sides coming off of defeats in their last game. Burnley specifically 1 0 away and defeat to Everton in a really, really important relegation fight for battle and survival in the Premier League. Burnley coming out loses there. They only make the one change this week due to the suspension of Dara O'Shea. He received that red card last week in the game against Everton and Matinho comes in for him. The side in full, Murich in goal, Matinho, Ekdal, Esteve and Asingon at the back four. Foster, Josh Cullen the captain, Berg, Brun Larsen at midfield four and Odsbert and Dastro Fafana the leading two up front. Looks like a 4-4-2 for Vincent Company side, although the former Manchester City man, he will be serving that touchline bounce, so he will be touchline side for his side this afternoon. Craig Bellamy, the one who will be taking the reins on the sidelines, whereas Brighton suffered a real tough 3-0 home defeat to Arsenal last week, and they make a couple of changes. Lamptey and Nciso were out due to injury. And Beltman and Jao Pedro come in for them. The side in full for Bruggen in goal, Beltman, Van der Heck, Dunk, captain in, Estupin on the back four, Baleba and Gross the midfield two, with Pedro on the left, Adingra on the right, Moday just in behind Danny Welbeck, who is leading the line. 19 first attempt, real big game for both Brighton, they're still chasing European hopes, three points can push them further to West Ham and Manchester United, but Burnley three points, it won't move them out of 19, but it will get them close to survival in the Premier League, trying to hunt down Luton and Nottingham Forest, with six points above them for this afternoon's action as the three o'clock Premier League games they're imminently underway and you'll be listening to Burnley versus Brighton coverage kickoff is imminent kickoff at Turf Moor is fastly approaching where Burnley sits in 19 welcome Brighton who sit in 10 both sides coming off of defeats in their last game and we are underway at Turf Moor Brighton Visiting Burnley, 19 versus 10, Vincent Company's side looking to that magical, magical survival relegation. Looks like they're beckoning to go down back to the Championship, but we've got a lot of Premier League games to go. But Vincent Company won't be on that touchline this afternoon. He's serving that ban. And again, Burnley, they maybe a home game against Brighton. Brighton are coming off that 3 0 loss at home to Arsenal. Maybe confident he's just knocked for Roberto De Zerbi's side. And Again, the start of the season so well, and there's been a bit of inconsistency in the last few weeks. But it's myself, Lewis Raster, and Steve Pearson to take you through the games. And right now, Josh Cullen just down Burnley, just won a free kick inside Brighton's half. And, and just going into this this, this game, Steve, we've, we've got two sides, a bit of inconsistency. Obviously, Brighton, the start of the season well, and they've just kind of 
been in and out of it in the last few weeks, good results, bad results, and then Burnley, who have never really got going this season at all, and it's coming into this game, both sides want three points, but you like to think Burnley, they'll just be a bit more desperate this afternoon. Yeah, it's got to be, hasn't it? As you, as you said, it, you know, talked about a miracle, hasn't it? It wouldn't be a miracle if they stayed up. I'm, I'm afraid to say I'm in the camp that kind of thinks that it would be. Uh, <laughs> not, not that I wish to disagree with Vincent Company, but I'm going dis- <laughs> to disagree with him slightly. He knows that as well. He, you know, he, he's, he's, you know, he's playing the, playing the crowd, playing the uh, the media game before the before the matches, and of course, he's got to have confidence in his side. You know, I mean, he's right to in this in this scenario because, as you say, Brighton. Brighton are playing the typical kind of we've been in Europe for the first time kind of season, aren't they? Where it's a bit of a struggle. They're starting to fade away a bit as the season has gone on. They're not quite the swashbuckling side that we saw before, but we know what the capabilities are of this Brighton side. So from a Burnley point of view, you would have to look at this and say, you know, we've got to go into this with some confidence to say this is a slightly wounded side, maybe a slightly tired side. We could get something out of this game very easily, but it will be a battle as uh, a couple of sides are already finding out. Manchester City, a goal up already against uh, Luton it's an own goal Hashioka has put through his own net to give Manchester City the lead in that one and the goal towards the top end of the championship we're not going to be able to keep up to everything on the championship for you today but the top of the table with Leeds losing at lunchtime Southampton have just gone 1-0 up against Watford as well really important goals all over the place we'll bring you updates on all the other games in the Premier League and also other championship action today as well as updates here just whilst Brighton they're just knocking around they're trying to just maybe get their foot in the game but Burnley coming forward down the left hand side with Brun Larson he's got a bit of space can he run at Veltman his man can he whip a ball in the box it's the best of him takes a deflection off of Veltman we'll go back behind for a Burnley corner good chance maybe just to test for Bruggen and goal test the the Brighton defence, we know they've got Dunk and Van Hecht, they've got physical players at the back. I mean, even Danny Welbeck coming back is in defending his own area. He's going to be a physical presence for, for the away side in there. Looks like it'll be Cullen to take and he'll whip it in, in and out and in swinger. Just waiting for everything to calm down in the area. Only go short to Coutinho. Looks like he'll take it in his stride. Got Berg in there, Foster got players up front of Burnley, whipped into the front post, still knocking around, it'll still go back out for another Burnley corner, last touch off of Beleba, bring you the lineups in a moment, just waiting for Burnley to take this corner, referee Simon Hooper for this afternoon's clash at Turf Moor, from Larson to take this time, another in-swinger, he's just pointing, he's wanting some movement from his teammates, he's wanting some some action, plays it short, chance now for Burnley, will they go to cross it in, dinks a ball into the front post, not really enough power on it, doesn't beat the first man there, and Burnley will just come away with the ball, it goes all the way back to the goalkeeper, Murich, and just to bring that update, Burnley, there's only one change due to the red card Darrow O'Shea suffered last week in the 1-0 defeat against Everton, coming in for his place is Vettinho, the Burnley 11 in full, Murich in goal, Vettinho, Ekdal, Esteve, Esteve John on the left back, Lyle Foster, Josh Cullen, captain inside, Sander Berg and Jacob Brun Larsen in the midfield four, Oddsburg and Dastro Fafana leading the line back to 4 4 2 for Burnley this afternoon. Whereas Brighton, two changes for them. Tariq Lamptey and Enciso come out of the side, and in come Veltman and João Pedro, both players exiting, picking up injuries. It's for Bruggen in goal. Veltman, Van Heck, Dunk captain in the side, and Estupinan at left back. Beleba and Gross in the midfield, two. Moda just in behind Danny Welbeck, and on the left hand side, Pedro and Edingra leading the whip and giving the whip for the away side just passing it in around their own half Brighton as we know deserve his side like to do out to the right side to a ding looks for a one-two with Moda but good interception by Sander Bergen just approaching the, the fifth minute Steve and not, not really any goal mouth action to talk about so far and I think it's just both sides obviously just trying to find a footing in the game yeah you settled in as you probably expect in that sense with Burnley the home side Brighton the pressing Fairly high. It's not a full press from Deserby's side. He's happy for uh, you know Welbeck to chase down on his own sometimes, and uh, you know they'll they'll work that through. Jao Pedro, obviously, will get forward as well as will others uh, from uh, behind them. But it's comfortable at the moment for Burnley on the ball. But as you said, there's no cutting edge at the minute because Brighton are playing a very strong midfield setup, and therefore the gaps aren't there quickly for Burnley to transition. So. At the moment, steady start, but uh, certainly signs from Burnley there's some confidence there. You know, they're playing the ball around, they're having some uh, touches. You know, they're, they're not un- overwhelmed at all by this Brighton team. Yeah, ball whipped into the area, shouts of handball for Burnley, but makes its way to Foster, still on the ball though. Coming down the right-hand side into Cullen, will whip a ball into the area. 
down the right hand side, Burnley come, can Foster get it, no he can't, right and still come here with the ball, not clearing it, and Palebo decides to clear it in the end, but a bit risky there, could have been their own worst enemy, could Brighton still on the wrong corner flag on the left hand side, João Pedro trying to get it away, out of danger, but it will go out for a throw in, good defensive action there from Pedro, but he's putting his side under a bit of pressure, really unwanted pressure there, Burnley still with the ball down the right hand side, it looks like Patino's down the left hand side of the back four, but Cullen's down the right hand side now, he hopes a good ball into the area, looking for Fafana, cleared away though by Adingra, just clears it long, gets a bit of space away, goes all the way back to the defence Burnley, want we'll to go back to the goalkeeper now, keep the pressure on, good start from Burnley so far, as Steve said, knocking it around nice and confidently, looking like the better side so far, but maybe Brighton just want to sit in and maybe weather the early storm from the horse and then go from there, long ball played into Foster, good one two, and this is a lovely piece of play from Burnley, into Lyles Foster, puts the ball back into the area, good challenge from Brighton there to win the ball from Baleba, cleared away there, lovely piece of play though from Burnley with Foster and Udsbert there to come away with the ball, and almost a rugby tackle down the right hand side, and Brighton win the free kick, it was a stupid hand apology, it's not Baleba who cleared away the ball in the end, but that, that's better from Burnley, it was lovely, just basically one touch football, here and there, give and take, pass and move, and that was a lovely move from Vincent Cup Side. Yeah, it certainly was. As you say, it is a good challenge to Pinyan making clear he got the ball. We haven't seen the proper replay yet that would give us the angle. Let's have a look here. Yeah, he gets the leg across, plays the ball for me. I'm, I'm comfortable with that in terms of, uh, from a defensive point of view, it is a hefty fall for uh, Foster. I'm not uh, denigrating that side of it, but I think he's every right there as to Pinyan just to put his body in between uh, player and ball. Obviously, yeah, I will have a check of it, but I'm I'm pretty comfortable with that call from uh, from Sam, Simon Hooper. But as you said, really good move from Burnley. Nice and fast, really crisp, good interplay, good running into space as well from them. And they look, you know, they look really free and open, which you wouldn't expect. You'd expect some nerves from this Burnley side. But credit to them, we're not seeing them. Maybe, maybe Vincent Company being in the stand is the best place for him. Who knows? <laughs> maybe, maybe just Who a bit knew? too much. Maybe, maybe they just see Vincent Company and they go, oh, no, I don't want to, don't want to upset him if he's in the stands and out of the way. There's no one that can look at. But that being said, that's what Craig telling me on the on the touchline this yes, afternoon yes. so also someone who can maybe strike the fear into those Burnley players still but coming over with the ball now are Burnley coming down the left hand side with Brun Larson the sprung an attack on Brighton using a good transition down the left hand side for Tino puts a good ball in Dunkley's away will Adingra come over with the ball he does good first touch but Sander Berg's closing him down he gets past Berg lovely but Brun Larson there with a really good interception and he'll just go all the way back to the goalkeeper just to recycle possession just approaching the Ninth minute, still nil nil at Turf Moor. Just looking for the opening now. Coming down the left hand side with Old Burke. Good ball into Foster. Now down the right hand side he comes. Can he get a ball into the air? He's starting really well on the horse now. Foster, can he keep it in play? He does, but just into the hands of the Brugger. And he's just saying, calm down. He's just saying, let's just maybe take a moment, take a breather, get on the ball. But Burnley, they're, they're looking the better side on the ball. They're passing it around crisper. And then Brighton, we know that deserve his many. They're going to play out from the back. They're going to they're going to maybe take a chance, take a risk. This time, the Brugger does go along. You do have someone like Danny Welbeck up top who can really be a nuisance and, and João Pedro. But Burnley, the pressing they're doing is very high, really intense. I think maybe if you deserve it, looking at this, it's like, well, they can't do this for 90 minutes, and, and but we can play out from the back for 90 minutes and just maybe take it a minute at a time kind of thing. Yeah, and I think you're absolutely bang on when you say about Verbrugge and Lewis in terms of just settling things down because his side are on the back foot at the moment. They're, you know, they're, they're not in a situation where they're, they're you know, getting total pressure from this Burnley side all the time, but they're struggling to get any kind of possession inside the, the Burnley half at the moment. A lot of the stuff they're doing is deep inside their own half of the field. We've just got to break in because there's a a uh, Brighton player down and Brighton weren't really going anywhere inside their own half so the referee Simon Hooper will just pause things so that we can check and see what the state of play is but you know you look at the, the situation for actually oh that's an awkward one because I didn't realise that Esther Pinion had gone down without anybody anywhere near him touching his ankle he should have pushed his both feet into the ground to stop but as he tries to turn again he feels the ankle go and the danger is that's an Achilles that's uh, yeah the uh, couple of the Brighton players have come across and the physios are across quickly they may well have seen a replay obviously on the screens that they have on the sideline and seen what the situation is even before they got across because there was no kind of scream or rolling around from Mr Pinion he just went to ground and he didn't look anything but when you look at it again Louis that that could be a nasty injury from nothing really yeah I think you spot on some sense those are the worst injuries when there's no collision there's no player near them he just goes down he's clutching 
his ankle, the, the back of his back of his foot, like I say, it looks like it's a, at least something to do with the ankle, possibly. Achilles, as Steve said, and just bring you up to date with all the other games. Brentford, Sheffield United, that is goalless, along with Nottingham Forest, Austin Wolves and Manchester City. Still holding that one goal lead at home to Luton, which currently in the Premier League, just looking at the table. I will take Manchester City top as Arsenal and Liverpool do not play until tomorrow. So that's it, some tops up at Viola's men could have a little advantage in the title race. Newcastle, they won four goals to nil earlier this afternoon against Spurs. That takes them into six above Manchester United and really heats up the battle for Europe. It's Manchester United away to Bournemouth in the late kickoff in the Premier League, which you can catch on this service. And the Super Nam he's got up a lot better and as you see, when he went down, it looks like it could be anything because when it's off the ball, you, you never really know if it's anything to do with a muscle. Achilles, just, they're, they're a bit suspicious. You never really know. But he's on the sidelines. I'm not saying he's going to continue, but he looks a lot better than he did when he first went down. Yeah, he, he, I mean, the main thing is he's walked off under his own steam, which is always a good sign, particularly with an Achilles injury. It's virtually impossible to put the foot down on the floor and put any weight on it at all if that's the case. So maybe it's just a little stretch, a little tweak of something. But... You know, they have to be really, really careful with that kind of thing with so much of the game uh, left to go. But fortunately, it looks like at least he'll be able to come back onto the field. I don't think we've actually seen him come back on just yet. I'm just checking. It looks like he is still on the sideline for the moment, but uh, for the minute, right down to 10 men. Just Burnley now. Still there knocking the ball around there, looking more confident and just looking at the sidelines, looking at maybe any, any changes, any, any players warming up. It looks like the possible substitution just seen in the corner yeah, fourth, fourth officials just crouch down with the board which is usually a sign that there's some that there will be a change made so we, as you said we've not really seen much uh, move ah, here we are here comes the uh, player from the sideline now they've obviously got the message from the uh, far side of the field so it will be the swap uh, for Brighton and as you say unfortunately for Esther Pinyan it's an early departure for the from the game just watching the replay again and as you say it's just so innocuous it's just there's nothing to it stupid and he just goes down obviously as you say he's, walk, he's just walking off the other side of the pitch to to where the both benches are Jean Pedro coming over just to check on him as well but he's Igor coming on the central defender for a stupid hand but he can play on the left hand side so that as well an early change such as that I've got I know formations and how fluid teams are especially someone like Roberto to his Herbie side but it's down as a 4-2-3-1 and no players are going to move but with a stupid hand being a more left winger it'll wing back he's an attacking fullback he's a good defender as well but the substitute coming on, he's more of a central defender. He can play on the left, but more of a back three. Do you think that could change the formation? Yeah, I'm, I'm just looking now. We haven't seen a shot, obviously, independent of two studio commentary, so we're relying on what we're seeing from our director from uh, Turf Moor. But I'm just looking to see. We, we're seeing a tight in shot where you can see Igor coming across. It looks for the minute at least and is staying with the back uh, four. But it's interesting when uh, they're out of possession, Igor's coming in very narrow down that side. So he's almost playing like a centre half, even though he is a left back. So it would be interesting to see how that develops, as you say, whether they actually do go to a back three, but for the moment, Igor is a sort of deep-lying left uh, back. Flying down the left-hand side, now a Brighton, Welbeck on the ball, can he get it to the edge of the area? He does good turn by Moda, he'll offer a strike, good goal on the left boot, but deflected away, and now Burnley, they've got space, can they catch Brighton out here in the transition? Good piece of play down the right-hand side, but Moda wins the ball really well, comes back from his attacking position, and now it's Beleba with the ball. The area, so we've already got an early substitution at Turf Marks. Igor coming on for Burbis is stupid and he's gone off. So it looks like I mean, Brighton there looking at who's currently out for this afternoon's game. It's a lot of players Ferguson's out, Gilmore's out, March is out, Matoma's out, Webster's out. They've picked up a fair few injuries out of the away side and just adding to it. Stupid and he's had a fantastic season as the left back, really good play. He's got a lot of assists, done really well for Brighton, really well in Europe as well as. Steve mentioned earlier they're just showing the signs, especially at this time of the season, a side that they do very well with that starting level, but when you get into Europe, you get those games, you get those trips, it, it really makes it hard when the squad death isn't there and it just shows a difference in a side coming in and maybe just taking a few years to get back into Europe and building the side up. But they do have a free kick with Gross to stand over on the left-hand side, whip it into the front post, looking for a Brighton head, cleared away, and Foster will come away with the ball, just clears it long, and will still have the balls it goes up for a throw in just inside Burnley's half on the left hand side but ever will leave it for the throw in but just to about to approach the 16th minute still Burnley nil Brighton nil just join us independent of the studio commentary of the game at Turf Moor and 
I just spoke about Steve. Both teams have had the ball. Maybe Brighton now are just growing a bit more into the game. But but neither goalkeeper has been troubled yet. Yeah, they, they've kind of weathered the early pressure from uh, Burnley, haven't they? And things have settled down a little bit now with that. I think the injury has just kind of taken a little bit of the, uh, the impetus out of the game. I think they've slowed down a little. But, you know, Brighton are having more possession, certainly not really the threatening point. But here's a better one down the right-hand side. Yeah, down the right-hand side of a dinger, a ball into the area. But the referee calls for a foul. Linesman's not got his flag up, I believe. It's just a foul from Beleba on Santa Berg. That'll be a good battle in the middle of the pitch Baleba went down looks like he just went down under his own momentum he wanted the free kick maybe the referee just given about a bit of simulation there and not happy with that no yellow card given out to the Brighton midfield no but Baleba that'll be an interesting clash you've got Cullen and then Gross you have two midfielders and what looks like the 4 4 2 4 2 3 one for Burnley and Brighton respectively but it is a free kick it'll be the goalkeeper Marich to come forward to take looks like he'll go long or he end up going short he's said everyone go forward let's get this ball into Brighton's half let's narrow that pitch down if it's long ball to the right hand side looking for Foster will he be able to keep it in play does well and Brighton do come away with the ball with the play looked like it was very close to going out of play but the linesman was close enough to it but Burnley still have the ball coming forward on the right hand side with Cullen ball into the area on the right hand side and Burnley I don't know how that chance has been missed I think it was Brun Larson running in at the back post such a good teasing cross at the back post and it's more that I don't know how he's missed that it's harder to miss that than to score I, I have no idea how he's missed that I expected that to rattle into the back of the net it's a lovely move from Burnley. Nice interplay. Perfect cross in. It's missed at the near post. And Brun Larson has absolutely got to score. There is no question. He comes in, right, tries to play right footed across the keeper, and he misses it. He's six yards out, unmarked. Volley should volley home, doesn't, and that's an absolute sitter from a Burnley point of view. I cannot believe he's missed. Just, it was a lovely ball from the right hand side for. And he just puts it, teases it in, it misses the runner for Fana. But as we say, we've got Brun Larson running at the back post. Verbruggen's got no chance of saving it. And all he has to do is just put it in the back of the net. He's stretching a little bit on his right foot. But I mean, you look back and you go, could he have maybe headed that? Could he have touched it with his left boot? You've just got to think, if, if you're Brighton, maybe that's just the kick they need to maybe get going. Just, you know, Burnley, they can score a goal after... After that happening, the both sides the drew at the Amex earlier this season. So, if you're Brighton, maybe just doing that 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 chance for for Burnley, even though it, it's a good momentum for Burnley, could that that could also be Brighton where that just wakes them up a little bit coming into the rest of this first half. They are coming forward with Welbeck in of offside though from the free kick. Looks like he timed his run too early and he did so. Chance wasted there from a free kick, but could that be a wake up call for Brighton that they may need after that Burnley chance? I think it's got to be, hasn't it, Lewis? I think, I think you know, there's got to be a spark from a, a Brighton point of view because at the moment they haven't found any kind of spark at all. It's been very flat from a Burnley point of view, uh, from a Brighton point of view, I should say. From a Burnley point of view, as I see the Burnley fans on our screens, you know, they will be happy with the way the teams play. They've had a really good first 20 minutes of this game. And they've had a, a, an absolute clear-cut opportunity there. Jakob Brun Larsen could become the uh, the first player for a while to score in three consecutive home league games. He'll never have a better opportunity unless something hits him on the line and rolls into the net. Right now, coming forward, though, looking dangerous. Beleba back to Gross on the edge of the area. Burnley will just hack it away. Brun Larsen looking for the runner for Fana, but falls into the path of captain Lewis Duncan. Brighton there looking a bit better, looking the grunt of the game as Steve said, they've maybe weathered that Burnley storm, the opening piece of play from Burnley and if you are Vincent Cumpy or Greg Bellamy on the sidelines, you're just hoping that you haven't missed your chance of momentum to, to take the lead, especially with the chance that Brun Larson had and I know how how managers and coaching staff are with statistics and XGs and everything and when you look at something like XG, if you look at the stats of XG and just looking at on paper you'd say how are Burnley not 1-0 up after that chance and again as you say Brun Larson is if he's someone as well you'd expect to finish that but Brighton are coming forward down the right side could ball into a ding where he's got time he's got space going to cut back on his left foot good tackle by Burnley but Brighton still have it shot at goal good save by Murich still just bouncing around in the area no one's taking control of it and Cullen will just hack it away just to clear some pressure for Burnley but Brighton still have the ball with Beleva coming down the right hand side now with Veltman space opening up good pass into Dingra pressure though still on from Burnley going to come with the ball good interception from Berg and into Brun Larsman and Burnley will just get on the ball and clear a bit of pressure and out to the right hand side and it's just one of them where again just on paper you'd go how are Burnley not in front and it's someone of Brun Larsen who you'd expect to finish off 
Yeah, the next year you certainly won. There's absolutely no <laughs> question about that. Because I expected that to go in. I was, uh, and so did everybody else in the ground, to be fair. That was not a shock uh, in that sense that, uh, that it was a clear-cut opportunity. Absolutely. But from a Burnley point of view, you've got to put that away now. You box that off. You say, OK, right, we've had the opportunity. We've had the better of the first 20 minutes. Let's keep playing the same kind of way. The danger is at the moment there's just a couple of opportunities coming for Brian where they've suddenly found players in space out wide. Now, all right, Burnley will give you a bit of space out wide and deal with what comes into the area. I accept that. But I think from a from a Burnley point of view, they've just really got to be careful because at the moment, because they're finding the space further forward, they're a little bit over eager of getting players pushed too high up. And that's creating some opportunities that Deserby is clearly spotted. And he's saying to his side, right over the top, right and left, to find that extra bit of space. Trying to get into the channels are Brighton and just got a free kick inside the half of Brighton. And it's got a goal in the championship. Middlesbrough have scored away to Ipswich. Again, another title chasing in the playoffs affecting their good ball into the area. Foster just can't control it and just loses balance. He puts the ball back into the area. So just go out for a Brighton goal kick. But again, Southampton, they've doubled their lead away to Watford. And it's really hotting up in the championship now. And we're just waiting for goals in the premiership really to come. We've still got the one goal in the three o'clock kickoffs this afternoon. It's still Manchester City leading Luton 1 0. Brentford, Sheffield United and Nottingham Forest host in Wolverhampton Wanderers that is still goalless as well as our game and some sense you would just expect I know I don't want to harp on about it but you'd expect Burnley to be 1-0 up after that run last and chance they need to just take advantage now but as I said Steve just needs to put it behind themselves but they're flying down the right hand side now of Burnley Miles Foster on the ball can he put a ball back into the area still bobbling around Brighton clear it but can run last and come away with it Interception, Jao Pedro, the man coming back there to win the ball for Brighton, just maybe trying to get a bit of breather. He's trying to come in and involve himself into play to really grow into it. He hasn't had that many touches as Brighton's number nine, and the ding was down down this left hand side. Maybe a switch of sides for Brighton just to test each other on the wings. He's coming forward, he's got Gross to his left. The ding will come in too. Strike it on his right boot, straight at the goalkeeper. Good chance there for Brighton, but Burnley deal with it well, they defended it well, but ding on that left hand side he might be causing a bit of chaos now for Brighton but we are halfway through the first half just over 23 minutes played at Turf Moor independent off to a commentary if you're listening and it's Burnley Brighton goal is still but to take us through to half time I'll pass it up to Steve yeah thanks Lewis as you said good chance for Brighton that time Burnley backing off allowing uh, Dingra the space to run towards the penalty area he took full advantage at least in terms of getting a strike in but Murich was in the right place comfortable save in the end for the Burnley keeper as he clears the ball long downfield he was looking for Odebear down that uh, right hand side but he got a little bit too much on it keeper's a little bit frustrated that the Burnley man wasn't proactive there in terms of making his run but it didn't look like he was a little over hit some of the frustration maybe at himself there from the Burnley keeper but it's his opposite number for Bruggen who uh, despite Burnley's uh, efforts and possession hasn't really been troubled so far clears a long ball over the top and Moorish has to be very quickly out of his goal and his penalty area to clear the ball high downfield it's headed away by Brighton again Jao Pedro cropping up in a more attacking position rolls the ball out onto that right hand side here's a Dinger again onto his left foot thinks about a strike then drops it off for Jao Pedro only a blue and white shirt here fall that's a poor cross in the end over hit and straight into the hands of the keeper Moorish who will roll the ball out and forward come Burnley again and suddenly they've got players over if they can find the right pass here I don't think that's particularly it it sends Odebeer back towards the right hand side he's got plenty of time to get possession but has to wait for some support uh, from behind him from Cullen and others and eventually now Brighton have got players back behind the ball but Larson has it wide on that left hand side really too many players set in attacking positions for Burnley as they have possession inside the half but again they find out a bit in space down this right hand side up towards the right hand edge of the penalty area a couple of step overs can't get room for a cross and pushes it past Igor the defender but it's cleared away and the job completed up towards the halfway line but there's only claret and blue shirts there and it's back to Murich who stands 40 yards from goal to take that pass a little ambitious perhaps from the Burnley uh, goalkeeper to be that far out in that kind of scenario but he'll take the gamble take the risk and take possession of the ball and play it right footed onto the right hand side but again he overhits it drifts well over the heads of uh, Asignon down that uh, right hand side Murich's really distribution at the moment just letting him down his shortstop has been fine distribution not on the money 
as, as, as well as you say, he's so far out of his goal, isn't he? Obviously trying to add that, that sweep and keeper, but uh, I know he's a fantastic shot stopper. He showed that previously at Burnley, but maybe that's what they're missing with Trafford out. He's, he's, a, he's a fantastic shot stopper as well, but he's really good playing out from goal, playing with his feet. There's a lot of modern goalkeepers, that's what teams want. They want them to play with the feet to be able to play almost as an extra defender, an extra on-board player, and that's what maybe Brighton have with Verbruggen over Mirich in goal today, and that's just an advantage. And But maybe that's something that, again, Brighton, they're very happy for Mirich to have the goal, have the ball at his feet, because they know that maybe they can get a goal from it, because maybe he can make a mistake, a poor pass, as you say. It's maybe knocking his confidence a bit with, with the passes he's not really making right now, and nothing's really coming off for him. So maybe Brighton there, like, I'm happy for you to have that. And if you want, we'll sit in our half, and then when we get the ball, we'll counter-attack, just as we're trying to do now clearance over the top, might drop in the end uh, well I thought it was going to drop uh, for Mode, but it's cleared away downfield but Brighton immediately win it straight back in midfield but no straightforward outlet for them in the uh, early stages of uh, that potential attack well they could dropped in to midfield and got possession so it's Brighton who have it with Dunk inside their own half of the field, Van Hecker with a, a rare touch with his ball, with the ball at his uh, feet Played forward up over the top, looking for a free kick off the ball. Referee is happy to give it, and he'll put a yellow card. Gross was the one who was brought down. Just trying to see uh, which defender it was. Esteve, was it or Cullen? Uh, looks like it was uh, Cullen who was uh, coming back to uh, support. Yeah, just grabs hold of Gross and pulls him back. So it will be a free kick to Brighton and the yellow card against uh, Cullen. First man to go in uh, Simon Hooper's book this afternoon. After 28 minutes of the game, Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Other goals elsewhere in the uh, Premier League to tell you about. Manchester City scored early on. That's your lot so far in the three o'clock games. Newcastle have stuck the goals out of everybody else, it would appear, this afternoon. In the Championship, a couple of interesting goals have gone in so far. Birmingham one up against Coventry. Hull are two up against QPR. Ipswich one down against Middlesbrough. Brian try and come through to the centre. It's hacked away. Shot comes in from distance. Who did it come off last? The referee says it was a Dingra. And therefore it will just be over and out of play for a Burnley goal kick. Uh, just continue those scores with Apes, which won down against Middlesbrough after Leeds has lost to Blackburn at dinner time, uh, and it is Southampton 2, uh, yeah, Southampton 2, Watford 0, as the other uh, main game with a goal, as Southampton still look to try and force their way into the top two. It looked unlikely, but uh, nobody else wants to get in there, it seems, so Southampton might still have the opportunity as Burnley scream for a foul for holding on Brun Larson, referee waves it away though and Brighton have possession wide on their right hand side and the players forward now in blue and white as Gross goes through the centre, not a good ball forward by him though, it hits the back of a Burnley player but uh, on this occasion Oliver can't pick up possession and therefore Brighton do win it back almost straight away, Baleba out towards Gross, on again for Baleba on the edge of the area, João Pedro threw into the box might have been offside, pulls the ball back across flag does go up now as it's cleared away on the uh, far post anyway but a good fast break and the first time we've seen a really quick transition from Brighton yeah that's the best piece of play really from them isn't it the Dingra had his chance a couple of minutes ago and that looked really positive there and Jao Pedro just making his run too early like Danny Welbeck did about 10 minutes ago or so and Pedro's just down maybe a bit of cramp a bit early for that or maybe he's just tweaked his ankle he's got Mirich helping him out there just off the pitch but he doesn't look good for Pedro he's, well he's holding the same place as Estepinian isn't he the back of the heel which again Achilles area a real weakness and something that once he starts to go and that looks like there's some pain there again Luis I'm afraid to say and we saw Estepinian finish his game after 10 minutes and I would be worried for Joe Pedro as well yeah and he's just add, add into it isn't it if you revert or deserve you've already made one change and now you've got to look at your bench and already look for a second and the injuries are really piling up for Brighton and it might be a cynical point of view but if you're Burnley right now there's 10 men on the pitch for Brighton this is a good chance to take advantage of it get that goal it's maybe the most again sportsmanship you'd want but it's a good chance for for Burnley and again this depleted Brighton side just over half an hour played and this is a chance for Burnley to take advantage yeah, you have to turn your humanity off a little bit if you're a Brighton player uh, Burnley player at the moment won't you I'm afraid to say it's the reality of the situation they find themselves in. Any opportunity, any slight advantage, they will have to take uh, the chances of it. And uh, Brighton, again, are looking at the moment not to take the goal kick. There's a little bit of a discussion as to whether Jao Pedro can carry on. It looks like 
Brighton is saying, well, we'll hold on for a minute and see because they've not made a change. If Brighton have taken the goal kick, but Rugen plays it short, and Brighton have given it away. Burnley win it back on their left hand side, and they've got plenty of players forward here if they can find the right pass, but eventually they're crowded out. Ball cleared away, but it's won back again straight away by Burnley. They're transitioning well here into their attacking uh, phase as Zoda Bear comes up on the edge of the area, steps inside all the way across the box, tries a shot on the turn, doesn't really get any power on it and it apologetically rolls over the goal line for a goal kick. He's just always dragging wide there, isn't he? He's really good player to bring it back into his left boot, coming inside, if beats Igor, all ends up, and maybe you wanted a Brighton player to come out, maybe Baleba or Gross to just close him down there, but they gave him space, and maybe he just snatches at the shot as well. Maybe he's expecting a, a Brighton player to come and close him down quick and early, and that doesn't happen, so he just snatches at his shot just to, just to get it away, but... Brighton, they are looking a little bit better, obviously, of the injuries. Maybe that's, again, knocked them a little bit of stupid hand. He's someone who is really important down the left-hand side for Brighton. Pedro is back on the field, looking at the Brighton bench. There's no one warming up yet, so it looks like Pedro's good to go for now, but obviously that's something to keep an eye on. But Burnley, they've just not dropped their heads a little bit, but Brighton are just looking better. They're pressing better, the passing's looking better, and... It's just one of them, we said it earlier, you said it earlier, Steve, they've just really weathered the early Burnley storm and now I think if you're Brighton, you just want a few shots on goal and you just want to test the goalkeeper a bit. Yeah, 21 uh, defeats in 32 Premier League games this season for Burnley, so we see the importance of turning this into a uh, positive scenario by getting a goal on the board. It still stands at 0-0 then, 33 minutes gone. Burnley have had the better chance, we've gone on about it a fair bit, we haven't had too many chances, Brun Larson missing an absolute sitter at the far post, it's got to be said, and uh, Burnley therefore not being in front, but forward comes Cullen, he's allowed to run right down to the edge of the penalty area, tries to thread a pass through the centre, he was looking for Fafana on the uh, back of the defenders, but it was just too wide an angle in the end, and Verbruggen was out quickly to slide out and block possession but a good opportunity again for Burnley and not a bad idea from Cullen yeah he just ran with the ball didn't he just dribbled it no one really stopped him but that just meant Brighton really just sagged off and there was no space for a pass in behind they really dropped deep did Brighton and made, made it difficult for Burnley but the chance possibly now good goalkeeper from Verbruggen but, but Burnley again once they, they up the tempo and those quick passes they do look very good and they are, as Brighton are opening Burnley up a bit more Burnley are also but both teams look very suspect to a goal being conceded and Maybe it's just who strikes first this afternoon. Yeah, looks like it may well be a couple of important goals, by the way, at the top end of the championship. Ipswich have equalised against Middlesbrough. That's uh, now 1-1, and Watford have pulled one back against Southampton, who went two up early on, but it's now Southampton 2, Watford 1. as a long clearance over the top. It's picked up by Van Hecker. He tries to play it out on the right-hand side, but his pass goes astray, and it's straight out for a throw-in to Burnley, midway inside the Seagulls' half, left-hand side. Rolled across to Berger, who's not really been able to get a presence in this game so far, but he plays the ball out wide as Sinyon comes up towards the corner of the penalty area, rolls it down the line, it's picked up again on that right-hand side, but there's no quick ball for Foster in the box. Now it's played across in the end, hooked all the way towards the far post, but cleared away before Brun Larson can get in there, but Burnley immediately win back possession. Foster A comes up on that uh, far side, needs some support, doesn't really get it. Right, they've reset themselves and therefore Burnley have gone back to their goalkeeper Murich, who's almost caught offside as he picks up possession of the ball. He's that far forward. <laughs> I can't believe how ridiculously far forward Murich is. Even when Brighton have got players around that Burnley players, you think there is a danger there that he could be beaten from the halfway line. But so far, Burnley have done well in terms of keeping that possession. And I've seen Murich do this before. It's not a big shot, but it's still makes me slightly nervous as the player offside here for Burnley as the ball went forward straight away and uh, referee Simon Hooper just making sure the little bit of playground antics doesn't turn into anything that causes him any problems for Farner just being a nuisance as Brighton wanted to take the free kick for the offside it's taken short with 10 minutes to go to the break we still await our first goal of the afternoon just the one goal in the Premier League in the three o'clock kickoffs through Manchester City an own goal scored by Luton as it were Manchester City 1 Luton 0 ball on the edge of the box here shot comes in from distance from Balaver but it's straight into the arms of Murich yeah, he just bobbled around there Balaver didn't really get anything on it too much did he it looked like he was setting up to strike it then he just it's leaning back and just goes into the arms of M M Murich but he just bobbles around just in front of him and he, he saves it well in the end but 
if I'm honest, I mean, Mirich hasn't really given me a lot of confidence this first half, whether it's play out from the back or his goalkeeper. Good place to play there into Sander Berg, as I say that, maybe, maybe he heard that and he, he wants uh, to prove me wrong. But again, it's been, it's been a good first half. I think, like you say, the only thing you are missing is his goals and chances. Everything in the middle of the pitch of the box is good, but Burnley are coming forward. Yeah, cross in well the way towards the far post, headed back over by Brun Larsen. Gross, Gross rather is the first one to get there, I should say. But Burnley win it straight back again, 25 yards from goal. They're pressing Bryden deep inside their own half. It's back out wide for Odebert again. He has support. Challenge comes in. Who did it come off last? Referee and assistant say it was off the Brighton man. Not necessarily a decision agreed with by the Seagulls players, as you'd expect, but it's uh, they who have to defend us. Asignon tries to get the ball under control on a bouncing chip ball over the back. He couldn't take it down, though, and it's cleared away for a throw-in to the Clarets, deep inside the Burnley half, almost down by the corner flag right-hand side. And they're finally to take it, about 10 yards away from the corner flag when it's finally taken, short to Fafana, who drops out onto this uh, right-hand side to pick up possession. It's worked all the way back to uh, defenders, though, in the end, Ekdal has it. Brighton will just push Burnley back up towards the halfway line. One or two <coughs> substitutes on the sideline. Just starting to uh, warm up again for uh, both sides, as it looks. It's, uh, Burnley were in possession deep inside their own half with Muric. Looking for a goal somewhere else to talk about, but there aren't any at the minute. It's such a quiet afternoon across the, well, largely across the Championship as well, but certainly in the Premier League, nothing to report so far on the score sheet. It's dunk under pressure, just rolls the ball back to the Brugger. Right footed downfield. Well, that gets his chest to it. He's pinballing around in midfield. Nobody really able to take possession of it at the moment until finally it's flicked forward. Well, that goes to ground looking for a free kick. Referee Simon Hooper says no thanks. And play will continue. It's just a drink, a dingra rather deep inside his own half. And in the end, it is all the way back on the edge of the six yard box to the Bruggen. It's good press from Burnley, you've got to say that as they hunt down the mistake. But Brighton at the moment, at least getting the ball up towards halfway. Right? Yeah, they've really beaten that Burnley press. And unfortunately, the ones who beat the press, they just can't get in behind Burnley. That's what Brighton want to do. They want to bring the press, beat the press, and then in transition, quick short passes and move the ball really well, really fast, and really direct more in the final third. Short passes in their own half, and then getting the final for direct quick passes making runs and really up the tempo from there but Burnley have done really well that even though Brighton have beaten that first phase of pressing they're doing really well to when they get past into that midfield whether it's Sandberg or Cullen or, or one of the four defenders at the back they're doing really well at Burnley to to really ensure that Brighton aren't doing anything as of yet but again it's just been one of them where it just both sides are happy in some sense with when certain players have the ball for for the team to have it and not press. Burnley are coming forward, but it's just that final pass for both teams that has really been missing in that first half. But we do have another goal in the Premier League, finally. Yeah, finally. It's been a while. <laughs> uh, Wolves have scored at Nottingham Forest at the City Ground. It is Forest nil, Wolves 1. We'll confirm the score of that and whether there's any VAR checks or anything. Cunha it is who has scored four Wolves. And at the moment, that stands. We always wait to see, just in case with the Premier League, when we're not getting the full feed through of a game. It's interesting to see whether anything changes, but at the moment, Forest nil, Wolves 1, still another in our game. Six minutes to go to the break. Burnley, as they have for the majority of the first half, driving forward, Underbear with a rather short pass forward. Challenge comes in from Igor. Ball is played out on that uh, far side for a throw-in to Burnley. And that gives Brighton time to reset, but there is space for Foster on the right-hand side. He'll come across into a more congested area. He's tackled. He wants a foul. Referee says no. Xiao Pedro gets away from one challenge just really well plays the ball down the right hand side challenge comes in though and it's a dinger who finally gets there but he's now facing back towards his own halfway line and he has to wait for support to come up from behind him which he finally gets but again that's given the home the uh, defensive side time to get well behind the ball it's a uh, believer plays it to gross right foot of ball into the area looking for Shao pedro gets his head to it but can't angle it towards goal did well to get anything on it really battling with the defender but he did finally get there, but in the end, Vitinho just did enough to hold him up. Yeah, really good baller from Gross, isn't it? And he gets his head up, and that, that's what Gross brings that Brighton midfield, is he wants to take a touch, get his head up, play the ball as soon as he can, and that's a real danger that when he's on the ball, given time and space, just like he was then, it, it's really easy for 
for the German to pick his pass and pick his time. And if maybe just a bit more whip was on that pass, and that cross into the area, just a bit more pace, then maybe Pedro could have he just made his life a bit easier. And in front of goal, but as you say, he did really well to, to get any effort on goal. Or try, at least a try an effort on goal, as he did. But Brighton, they are looking the better side in the closing stages of the first half. And again, just looking to maybe challenge the goalkeeper. But they have the ball in the final third, won well by Burnley, but they have a free kick as well now. Yeah, brought down uh, this time one or two players. If you're looking at the referee, who's tried to let as much go as he can, keep the game flowing, but Welbeck brought down there just outside the uh, penalty area. So he will win the uh, free kick. Discussion uh, with the uh, defender uh, as well. <laughs> it was uh, asking him to uh, come back to support his uh, central defenders there in a more central position, but he gives away the uh, foul. So a free kick in a decent position, just outside the penalty area, to the left of centre. Muric is setting the wall. We can't see how big a wall it is at the moment. It's like be about four players by the time that the referee sorts out where the free kick should be taken. Just strides out the ten yards. The wall needs to be back. I'll put the spray on the floor. Just three Burnley players in there. Berger is uh, one of them. Well, Marston in there as well. Consolation, uh, by the way, we've got the championship important at the bottom end of the table and the playoff chase as well. It's Birmingham 2, Coventry City 0. A very big three points for the home side at St Andrews as they look to get themselves out of the bottom three. But free kick here then from the left of centre, as we said, whipped in right foot and it's pushed away on this occasion. Mone's strike was angling towards the bottom corner, but Murich was across quickly to make the save. It's a good strike, it's a decent save. Yeah, really good save from Murich. It's what you'd expect the goalkeeper to be doing. It's a save you'd expect from him, but really good free kick from from Modere. It's one of them distances. It's not exactly too close or too far. It's a really good one to go for a shot at goal, but Brighton, they've got a really good set piece taker in Modere. Gross have got opportunities from set pieces. They've got another one here with the corner and just waited for Gross to whip one in there. But Simon Hubert is going to have a word with Duncan, Belever, Larson, and Patino there just involved and he's just having a word before the corner is whipped in. And it's Brighton, they're keeping the pressure on coming into the half time whistle and again, maybe they can take the take the lead going into half time from this set piece. Simon Hubert is making it clear as the bus stop queue is ready just outside the six yard box for Brighton, five players in it waiting for the 1-2-5 to come in from the left hand side with the corner kick, still a bit of pushing and shoving going on but play does finally get underway and after all that Murich just comes to his edge of his six yard box, clutches the ball out of the air and the corner kick comes to nothing I mean it's good, really good goalkeeping but with the, when you have that build up don't you from the corner <coughs> you're expecting a better delivery as you say when you've got the Brighton players lining up it looks something off of the training ground and something that were had practised and ready to go across his delivery just wasn't there, good goalkeeper though from Murich to, to fly out of his goal and Good goalkeeper, good commanding of his area, good presence. And now Burnley have got a chance coming forward and went well by Gross. But it's, the game's really hotting up coming into the latter stages of the first half. And maybe we're going to go at the end. Yeah, we shall see. Not too many of them around, as we said, just the two so far in the four Premier League games. I was in the game between Brentford and Sheffield United, stand at 0 0. I know the Grand Nationals are in the second half, but there's plenty of excitement in this one, don't worry. Stay with us, we'll find a goal as well. Beck, beautiful control by him, left hand edge of the penalty area, comes back inside, wants a way to get the ball across quickly. But Burnley have covered back, to be fair to them. Igor rolls the ball down the left hand side, Gross will come across onto this near side, looking for space, can't really find it, but does have support from Welbeck again onto the edge of the area. Back to Welbeck again inside the box, wants to play it right foot, and <coughs> maybe should have taken it first of all with his left. That gave defenders chance to get across and cover, and in the end, Asignon pushes it behind for a corner. Really good player there from Brighton's number 18, the former Arsenal Manchester United man, just good one too there with him and João Pedro linking up well, and then maybe the pass was just over it, maybe he'd go for a shot on his weaker left foot, but again, Brighton keeping the pressure up, corner on, maybe a better one this time from Crossley with the in-swinger. The queue is there again, four players in it this time, and it's chipped in towards the far post, straight into the hands of Murich, who comes out well, makes the save, and does exactly the same thing again, this time his far post rather than his near post, but again, the kind of commanding goalkeeper you want to see from your uh, keeper, if you are a Burnley fan and Burnley player, certainly, it gives them the confidence, they should have plenty of confidence in this game, I think it's been the better side over the first 45 minutes, despite the uh, lack of chances, a goal elsewhere, and it comes again of the city ground, Nottingham Forest have got an equaliser against Wolves, Morgan Gibbs-White again on the score sheet for the home side. So one of the uh, 
of sides that Burnley looking to hunt down towards the bottom end of the table. Drawing, another one losing in Luton. And on towards uh, Burnley inside the Brighton half. Three minutes of stoppage time will be played. And they have possession down the right hand side. Plenty of players in the centre as well. If they can get the ball across, but the cross is not a good one. The uh, header back from Van Heck, I will say, is ambitious to Van Verbruggen, who dives to sort of make the save outside his left hand post. Yeah, just not the best of crosses there, just watching it back, as you say, I think he heads it and he's hoping to get it back into his goalkeeper's hands, but maybe just anywhere, he just wanted that away from away from him there, and Verbruggen, he did well to really claim it confidently, but yeah, Burnley there, just really poor delivery into the area, but both teams have lacked that in the first half, the, the play from box to box has been quite good, the transitional play, really good passing, crisp passing from, from both, but then just as soon as they get inside the 18 yard box or close to it, just the crosses, apart from the one from Foster, I believe he whipped it into the back post to Brun Larson, it's been pretty poor, but he's the man on the ball now, it's Brun Larson on the left hand side. Yeah, he gets it from Berger, drives towards the byline, chips the ball back in into a dangerous area, but there's only Igor there who heads the ball away, Burnley win it straight back though, and they've now got plenty of players forward, but Brighton have got uh, players back, and we're congested into a 10 yard space, around the edge of the penalty area, Oliver drops the ball back in again, wants to chip it into space, but there's nobody making the runs on the angle into the penalty area, it comes back out to Asignon on this right hand side, onto his left foot, he slips as he tries to shoot, ball breaks for Berger on the edge of the box, he wants to shoot but he can't find space, does find Oliver, right hand edge of the box, whips the ball in, right across the face of goal, Fafana slides in, and somehow it flicks off his shin, I think, and flies across to the far side, but he couldn't quite turn it home. Burnley back in possession, but Berger's lost it. Jao Pedro wins it back, and Gross chips it forward, looking for the run of Welbeck, but he should be beaten to it. In fact, it's a dinger, actually, it goes forward. Down that right-hand side, Welbeck has just pulled away onto the left. There's a foul by a dinger, but what an opportunity for Burnley. Just watching it back, really good ball, and he's stretching for Farner as you say to to get the ball. It does come off his shin, as you say, and if he could, if he if he bits his leg and it's just a bit higher, or again maybe he tries to. I know it's slow on the pitch, but maybe if he tries to head head it or, or goes with his right boot instead, maybe Burnley have got that lead. And the two best chances have come from Burnley, one from that run last and effort earlier in the game, and again the pressure was on into the closing stages of the first half, and it was really good play down the right hand side from. Oh, the bear, good cross, beats his man, whips it into the area, and then what was missing was that goal. And going into the half time, we're only, well, we've passed three minutes now, but we've just got an injury now for Burnley, so we might have another maybe 10, 20 seconds of the game to go. I think you'd be the happier of the two if you're Vincent Company out of the two sides, and Burnley have had the better half, really. And there's the uh, referee, I thought they may have broken offside there, but actually the referee has blown for half time as Burnley came forward it's the home side who've had the better of the opportunities and the better of the possession in the first half but at the break it is Burnley nil Brighton nil Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides having good chances. Best chance of half fell for Jakob Brun at last. And a good ball from the right hand side from Oda Burr. Puts it into the back post. Misses his original target for Farner. And Brun Larson with the goal at his mercy. He misses the target. And Verbruggen is spared his blushes. Brighton have looked good transitionally. Really haven't had any shots for Murich to worry about. Half time at Turf Moor. It's Burnley nil, the Brighton nil.
half time at Turf Moor and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They're just not being as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Vert Bruggens. Blushes. Really good first half football. Just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They're just not being as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose, and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Vert for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. Best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose, and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose, and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose, and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Vert for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose, and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose, and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose, and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball to the back pose, and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. 
half-time at Turf Moor and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right-hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pose and Jakob Brunlars with the call at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pose. And Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pose. And Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pause and Jakob Brunlars with the call at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pause. And Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. Best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pose. And Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pose. And Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pose. And Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pose. And Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. The best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odeberg. Puts a teasing ball into the back pose. And Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half 
half-time at Turf Moor and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like the best chance of the first half. Falling to the home side. Really good play down the right-hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back boards and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's firmly nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Firmly nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. Best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back fours and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like the best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side for Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back fours and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like the best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back fours and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like the best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back fours and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. Best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back fours and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like. Best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back fours and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like the best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back fours and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides just merely missing that final third passing. They've just not been as crisp as you'd like the best chance of the first half falling to the home side. Really good play down the right hand side from Odebur. Puts a teasing ball into the back fours and Jakob Brunlars with the goal at his mercy. He misses and he spares the Burt for Ruggins. Blushes. Really good first half football, just missing the goals. But at half time at Turf Moor, it's Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Half time at Turf Moor, and we are goalless. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. Both sides. And we're underway for the second half at Turf March. Burnley nil, Brighton nil. A really good first half, back and forth, and Burnley without a shadow of a doubt having the better chance through Jakob Brun Larsen cross to the back post. Somehow he missed <laughs> out of everything. You'd have put a lot of players, even maybe non-players there, and you'd have thought that it'd be a 1-0 Burnley. And a good chance coming into the second, 
close to the second half starting. Good crossing from Oda Bear on the right hand side and it's Fafana just waiting there. He was just reaching, couldn't get his body over the ball and went out for a bright goal kick. But a really good first half. We have had a substitution. Taylor's come on. We are just waiting for confirmation. Our independent off team studio monitors. It was we saw the number. We saw the number of three for Charlie Taylor. We haven't seen who's gone off. He has gone on to the left hand side. So my assumption would be it's Vitinho or Asignon who has gone off of the field. Getting confirmation that is Vitinho who has gone off. So it looks like Asignon will play off the right hand side and Taylor will be on the left hand side. But it's myself, Lewis Rafter and Steve Pearson to take you through the second half. And the first half it was positive play and in some sense it was just missing that the final third, the, the pass in the final third just wasn't there. We'll bring Stephen a second as Burnley coming forward now. Sander Berg on the edge of the area of a striker goal, just always going wide, always going over the bar, just leaning back, never a chance for that to fly into the back line of a pop line out from the back from Brighton. But maybe that's a sign for coming into the second half that Burnley they want that goal and they want to take that lead. Yeah, they've got no choice, have they? You've got to go forward with it. They will feel confident after the first half that they can, uh, you know, get that uh, victory. No reason not to in the way that they've played. And, and kept right in the bay. I mean, uh, think about it, Murich really hasn't had a proper save to make. And as you said, Burnley have had the two better chances of the first 45 minutes. There, Berg, he just kind of got the impression that he, he wasn't really set in his mind in terms of what he wanted to do. He, he took the right option, which was to try the strike and curve it around. Here come Brighton, though, through the centre. Through the centre with a ding, looking at the better back in his rim and right foot. Really good defending there from Burnley, and the will win the free kick. Steve, really good defending there. Looked like a Dingra one on one chance. Gonna use his pace and his power. It was a really good through ball found by Modere just on side as well, just beating the offside trap. A really good play, but the better defending there. And you'd have thought Brighton, a Dingra, really pacey winger. He'd have got his chance there one on one. And really, first chance for Murich to really face, but really good defending and recovery pace from the central defender there. Yeah, it was. He just never really got it out from under his feet to Dingra, did he? The first touch didn't give him that, that run in then to the uh, to the penalty area. He had to wait, and that, as you say, that gave defenders a chance to get back and make the challenge. But again, promising from Brighton. They, they do look a little bit more lively in the early stages, but the game is quite open. It's a little bit backwards and forwards compared to that first half. Well, back well by Brighton, ball played into Welbeck. He's got company with... Burnley defence brings it out to the right hand side. He's got support in a Dingra further wide on the right. Plays it into him. Good ball into the area. Looking for Pedro. Just comes off of the side of his head and into the safe hands off. Merit. So, like I say, just that like one substitute change at half time. Taylor coming on for Bettinho. The side's exactly the same apart from that. Burnley's 11 in full. Merit in goal. Left back Taylor. Esteve, Ekdal, and Asin Young. Midfield forward of Foster Cullen on a yellow card. Captain of the side. Berg, Brun, Larson, and Fafana. And Oda Bear leading the line. Also, we've seen a bit of change there. So you know the bird on the right, Foster on the right, both maybe just that fluidity and that change. Really just trying to cause Brighton problems. We've seen that Estupin and did go off early on in the game, around 10 minutes in, and Igor came on. So maybe that's something they're trying to take advantage of. Ah. Burnley, Brighton just with the ball now, just bring it there, 11 minutes for Bruggen, Veltman on the right-hand side, Van Heck, Dunk and Igor, that back four, currently could change to a back three, but they're currently still going with a back four, Cross and Baleba in the middle, Adingra on the right, Pedro on the left, Modere just in behind, supporting Welbeck, and again, if you're looking going into this second half, you'd think that Vincent Company he's serving that touchline band, so he's not on the touchline, but he'd be the happier manager out of the two, but but Odi Zerbi is known for tactical tweaks and maybe he'll change in the second half to maybe give Burley the momentum. Yeah, there's a little bit of a quicker press at the moment from Brighton is the main change. Not particularly changing anything from a lineup point of view as far as I can see, but they are certainly pressing higher and getting into the face of this Burnley side, trying to cause them problems, hunt the mistake down. It's not quite worked out yet, but they have won back possession much more quickly on the halfway line and then been able to drive forward at speed, looking to use the pace of Welbeck and Adingra. So certainly better from Brighton in the first few minutes. If you're a Brighton fan listening in, you'll be more pleased with the way that your side's uh, got into the game in this second half. It was very comfortable, certainly for the first 15, 20 minutes for Burnley to have most of the possession and most of the pressure. Just about hit the 50th minute mark, five minutes into the second half. You've joined us independent off studio commentary of the Burnley Brighton game. He is goalless. 
in our game at Turf Moor. Good chances from either side. Burnley are coming forward now. We've heard of Barry. He just trips over his own momentum and now spacing behind on the left hand side. Vacated and Pedro's coming forward. One on one chance now with his defenders. Good defending there by Ed Daly. Just stood him up. He was a stronger defender. And again, as Steve said, it's a really open game. The start of this second half. Foster's got the ball on the right hand side. Just played it to the middle to Fafana and intercepted easily by Beleva to Modere and just a bit back and forth for teams of the throwing bodies a bit forward and they've got a 15 minute rest it's just now we can up the intensity for the opening 15-20 minutes of the second half hoping to get that goal the leading goal just bring you updates elsewhere in the Premier League Brentford Sheffield United that is still goalless got goals in the Nottingham Forest Wolverhampton Wanderers game one all there Manchester City still leading Luton by one goal to nil goalless in our game and Grand National, that's just finished. We have the winner there, and it was an entertaining spectacle. And now maybe we're just missing goals here for us to be an entertaining spectacle. <laughs> yes, yeah, we could do with somebody leaping <laughs> forward in this game, couldn't we, at the moment? But it's a little bit like trudging round uh, for both. Uh, both, it's just like they're trying to get round the course rather than actually win it at the minute. But uh, for the second, it's Burnley are now back on the front foot again, trying to move forward. But Brighton sitting deep again. Berger's got to take control of the game a little more, and he does well here ball from us young into the box and for Fano he's always stretching there for the header and just whipped in and he's at the back post and there's a lot of power there's a lot of fizz on the cross on the right hand side good first time cross maybe if Cullen could be the one running in front there or maybe if Foster I believe there's a lot of Burnley players in the area and he does well and watch it back on replay actually I think maybe for Fano should do better than, than what he did actually yeah, I, th I think because he's stretching so far and diving in, there's nothing he can do really to control the header as such. He does really well to get to it at all and plenty of power on it, but as you said, no direction in the end because he's stretching so far. But it's a good ball in, it's a good movement, it's quicker around the penalty area. You say, Berger for me has been a little bit pedestrian when he's had possession of the ball, hasn't really got it out wide enough to get the ball into the penalty area quickly, but that time they did, and it shows what they can do if they can turn this Brighton defence around. But. Uh, we shall see whether that can uh, happen as the uh, game goes on. I'm, I'm sure you know anyway, but confirmation, I am Maximus has won the Grand National. Not a good day then for the bookies as the favourite rumps home. Yeah, now we're just waiting for our game to go into the, the next gear, get into the final final phases. But Brighton have won a free kick inside their own half. Well bit fouled by Ekdal and we're just waiting for an update, possible goal in another game at Brentford and Sheffield United, no goal there, but with an update of a possible, possible goal there, that's goals just like our game, and we've seen pictures of Roberto De Zermi, he won't be happy with his side, he's thought his side will have taken the lead by now, and we spoke about earlier in, in the first half, inconsistencies, and I think that just sums Brighton up, but, but to your point earlier, it's, it's more that they're showing the signs of a team that's playing the first real season in Europe, and it's just really fatiguing them so far at this point of the season. Stephen in second as the team was on the ball down the right hand side blocked away though by Burnley beats his man though and still has the ball goes back to Duncan he's at the point of the season where Brighton they're still fighting to get in Europe for next season they still want to get in those Europa League places even the conference places but Brighton have more to fight for us coming forward now good ball into the area cleared away ball piece of play by Modair down the left hand side and Dingle was the last man to get the touch and that's much better for Brighton and now they're looking like a side that aren't really fatigued and they're knocking it around better but a really good start to the second half from both sides. Yeah much more open isn't it for the uh, neutral it's not so great if you're a Burnley and Brighton fan I am sure but nevertheless from our point of view it's, uh, it's nice to see that the game has started to open up we're starting to get chances and that was similar wasn't it round the back a Dingle at the near post just couldn't quite get a touch on it as they go again Modair almost find space to get across in on the back of the Burnley defence but this time the Claret's able to uh, shut the door still on the ball ah, the visit inside with Van Heck will he put a ball into the area looking for Wilbeck just over hitting Asignon will head it back to Miric to his palms and we've seen him he had a very good first half did the Burnley goalkeeper just watching the replay good piece of play from Modell down the left hand side of it again similar to Fafana for Burnley's chance he would just stretch in and just trying to get a touch on the ball. He's been a danger all afternoon long. That's the thing with down that right hand side. Burnley with the goal kick into Taylor. He's coming forward down the left hand side. Poor ball into Brun Larson in front of him. But Brighton really applying that press. Pressing more, pressing with more intent. Just over 55 minutes played. Still goalless. Just seen pictures 
past studio monitors of, of Craig Bellamy. So what he'll be thinking of, and it is one of them. Brighton, it's 19 versus 10. Brighton to kick off. That's where both teams lie. Bright Burnley can't move out of that, but Brighton can certainly push forward and gain, gain more points and put pressure on teams above them. Same with Burnley, as you said, Luton are losing. If Brighton can Burnley, sorry, can win this game, that puts pressure on Luton coming into the back end of the season. So. Both sides, it wouldn't be the worst result in the world for it to be a nil-nil, but both sides, you'd like to think, can really improve and put pressure on the teams above them with three points with how the results are going. Yeah, and as you say, the results are in the favour of Burnley at the moment. If they can turn this into a victory, as I said, no reason why they can't on the balance of play so far, but with Luton losing and Forest only drawing at Wolves, you know, if you can get the victory, you could come to two points as Muric comes racing out of his goal. Fortunately, defenders in front cover, but there's still a chance here for Gio Pedro. A good ball into Pedro. Too many Burnley bodies around. Can it fall for much? Yeah, cleared away. Falls to the engine area for Gross, who strikes a goal, takes a deflection, and goes wide for a Brighton corner. But we spoke about it in the first half. When Maric flies out, there's just that bit of nervousness from, from both of us, and they're just waiting for a mistake. And the mistake happened there, and unfortunately, Brighton just couldn't capitalise. Yeah, it nearly goes in. We see the replay from the goal behind the goal at the other end of the field so looking right at uh, Mudrich's goal there's a deflection off it that takes it right across from one corner to the other and it only spins a yard or so wide of the left hand upright really good opportunity in the end uh, then for that uh, right side Burnley were complaining there should have been a foul in the build a bit like Jao Pedro made a mess of the chance but Brighton continued with the possession almost got the credit because a big goal goes in elsewhere but we'll come back to that after the corner Gross to take, it'll be the outswinger on the right hand side, better delivery this time, looking for Van Heck. Burnley will clear, it's still in their own area, still bobbling around, Mudder will try to keep it on the left hand side, he wants a throw in, Burnley want a throw in, it will go the way of the away side, just bring you that update, it's Nottingham Forest, they've taken the lead to Wolves, they went down early on in the 40th minute from a Cunha goal, they struck back to equalise on the stroke of half time and then Danilo's given them the lead just before the hour mark there for Nottingham Forest, a big goal there in the Premier League, Brighton still coming forward with Welbeck in the area, into Baleba gets back onto his left boot, strike at goal deflecting away and Brighton will get another corner and pressure is really applying there for Brighton but we saw this in the first half, the first 10-15 minutes Burnley looked the better side, the Brighton weathered that storm looked the better side and following down the same path in this second half. Yeah it certainly is, as you say, plenty of pressure for, for Brian. we've talked about set pieces, they've been poor so far in this game, the uh, fourth corner of the game, can they make something on it as the queue forms on the penalty spot? Gross, the in swinger this time, Maric clears it away, bobbling around in the area, not too far, and cleared away only as far, far as Gross the corner taker, will look to have a ball into the back post again, good cross into the area, but Burnley clear away, Brighton still pressurising with the ball, Modest swings a ball in, Ekdal clears away and they just can't get the ball into the area, they can't get the best ball in but Burnley keep clearing and Brighton continue to, to pressure, ball from Gross into the path of Welbeck just over here and he'll go back to Maric in goal, just get back on the ball and just confidently knock it around and Ball pass there and it falls to Gross. Drop of concentration there for Burnley. Gross with a strike at goal. Really good effort there, but Burnley again just falling asleep there and Gross was alive to it. Yeah, the press is coming harder and harder now from a Brighton point of view, but that is just slackness. There's no question for Berger. Just doesn't really see what's happening. He's lazy as he plays the ball across. Mental lapse there on that occasion from the Burnley man. And it's a good strike from Gross. It's a decent save. It's, it's more or less straight above him for Morris, doesn't have to move too far to his left but still has to be sharp up to push the ball behind for the corner another corner Gross to take again the outswinger on the right hand side and lined it up again is that Brighton cue ball looked into the middle comes off a Brighton head and it just goes wide looks like it came last off of Jao Pedro and that time much better delivery in from Pascal Gross better movement in the area there from from Brighton and it just seems like a matter of time that we spoke about this just off there half time it seems like there's goals in this game it's just about the better chances coming absolutely and the chance was there on that occasion as you say it's the first time they managed to whip the ball in with a bit more pace get it away from Muric so he can't uh, affect the ball as it comes in and Jao Pedro does really well there were three Brighton players all in that area as you say it wasn't quite clear who got the head on it until we saw the replay it was definitely Jao Pedro as you say Lewis but, but again look at this Burnley try and get forward they've given the ball away for Fortunately, the pass forward comes to uh, Berger and he could start things off again for Burnley. 
down the right hand side now with Foster he's got space to attack his man plays it into the middle can Fafana come away with the ball too many Brighton men there cleared away Foster looks like he was in an offside position plays the ball into the area just over hit but will be kept in play in the box now of Burnley will it go back to Foster strike at goal comes off Asin Young who's there he's, he wants a corner won't be getting any up here a Brighton goal kick just over an hour played at Turf Moor still goalless and Again, it's just, I think, if you're Burnley, you, you want to put it behind you, but I think you can just see that, as it looks like Jay Rodriguez is warming up to come onto the field of play, that maybe that chance for that Brun Larson chance is still in the memory, and they just know that maybe they should be 1 0 up, and on a different day, the 1 0 up, and then momentum swings their way, Brighton play a different way, and, and the game's a completely different game. Yeah, absolutely. It, it is just, just sort of seesawing either side of central, isn't it, at the moment? So there's no real dip towards one side or the other it just keeps rocking backwards and forwards quite gently this game in that sense he said Rodriguez uh, will come on so there'll be a little bit of a, a an upfield spark because a couple of goals have gone in elsewhere we'll come back to them in a minute because Brighton are attacking but a couple of big goals in the Premier League Ross with the ball forward up for Welbeck just over it but Welbeck does well to keep the ball really good hold up play plays it back to the left hand side and still coming forward and Brighton Mudder gets it on his left foot plays it into Pedro the shot at goal and just always leaning back, he tries to get the shot in, but unfortunately, just not able to get the connection he really wanted. Just, just before I bring you the updates on the goals elsewhere, is Rodriguez coming on? That was number 23 for Fana. We'll be going off just so reshuffling up top. Rodriguez, really experienced striker for Burnley. Hopefully, he can come on and grab a goal for the home side. But Brentford, they've taken the lead at home to Sheffield United in their game. Steve said a few goals now flying around the Premier League. Manchester City have got the second. Mateo Kovacic assisted by Julian Alvarez. They've got a 2 in the lead now at home. And Wolves, they pulled it back. Cunha with his second of the afternoon. Two all at the City ground. And things are really hot, hotting up in the Premier League. A goal elsewhere, everywhere but both our game. So maybe the goals are flying in. So maybe it's only a matter of time before we get one. Well, you would hope so. I mean, Fafana has gone off. He's had a couple of opportunities. I'm not going to be too critical of him for the few chances because he just had to throw himself at the ball. But uh, he will have felt that he should have got two goals this afternoon. He hasn't. And therefore, he's got the uh, hoik after uh, with half an hour left to go. But, you know, Rodriguez, again, it's a bit of experience and a player who can hold the ball up and bring others into it. Larson down the left-hand side does well, but gets a better development and he'll just clear it away. So, Burnley corner looking at Wolves' second goal, there is a VAR check there, so looks like that's been completed as soon as I say that, so two all at the City ground, City, Manchester City, two goals, to the good at home to Luton, Brentford leading, one goal to nil against Sheffield United, and our game currently goalless, it's the third corner for Burnley, Brighton have had five, the best chance from corners coming from the last one for Brighton, from João Pedro's header. Burnley have their chance to take advantage of a set piece. It'll be Brun Larson on the left hand side with the in swinger from his right boot. Puts it into the middle, into a dangerous area. Cleared away by Brighton Head and Cullen bring it down. He does well there. Asin Young will just put it back into a dangerous area. Van Heck will just head it back into the arms of a Brugger. And again, I think apart from one set piece, what's so Brighton have had three. Uh, Brighton have had four. Burnley have had three. Eight corners. Out of eight corners, only one has been a really good delivery and that's just been a poor area for both sides this afternoon it has hasn't it that, that's disappointing you know particularly from a Brighton point of view you kind of think oh yes good good set piece side it will create opportunities and most of the crossing have been not even a chance has it because it's just dropped to Murich or, or a defender and easily being cleared away from that point of view from Burnley's side of it they know they've got to be efficient in this league in terms of uh, set pieces because that might be a, a clear route to goal but today it certainly hasn't been and it's been a poor effort from both sides from that side of things when you think there's so much effort put into set pieces uh, you know these days from the coaching staff especially set piece coaches etc not really seeing it this afternoon are we on a windy Burnley as we see the Premier League flag above the turf Moor stand is blowing quite uh, abruptly at the moment so you kind of get a feeling that 
Okay, maybe that's one of the reasons. Maybe that's what we're trying to say. It's too windy at Burnley to get a good cross in. Uh, I'm sure Pascal mm. Gross will go, well, if it weren't for the wind, my ball would have been yeah. perfectly with Jean Pedro's <laughs> head there. I just, yeah. do, just the uh, elements are affecting my crosses. I, I accept the fact of the Masters that if it's blowing a gale, <laughs> it might blow your ball around and it might affect the lie of the uh, ball. But to turf more at the moment, I'm, I'm not convinced. But we're more, spe- more sceptical than, <laughs> than if you played at the Masters. But yeah, maybe if you Pascal Gross, that's why the ball was playing in the best from last. And maybe just a bit of a excuse for the players to use we do have a Burnley player down as the ball's going out of place at Simon Hooper just pause play get a bit of medical attention just waiting to see what Burnley player it was it looked like it was one of the defenders Asin Young and Jean Pedro just had to come in together close to the byline as well so it will be looking like a free kick for Burnley Asin Young's down but like there was another Burnley player down as well inside their own half don't just having a word with referee Simon Hooper now Independent off tube studio monitors. We're just waiting to see if the Burnley players got back up in the middle of the pitch. Looks like it might be an Ed Dal, would have been my guess, who's, who's down. I believe it is. So looks like maybe again a bit of cramp or, or something like that. But as we've just got a stoppage in play, again, just to bring you an update elsewhere. A second goal for, for Brentford it was an own goal to give them the lead, and only five minutes later they've doubled that lead. So it looks like Brentford will be going away with three points. And as we spoke about, results are going elsewhere for Burnley. It's Ekdal who's down. So, really, Burnley, maybe a few substitutions. They'll be making some now. Just went to see who will be coming on. But we spoke about earlier, but results are really going the way of Burnley. So, really coming into the back end of this second half, they really need to push for a goal because three points could really make a difference this afternoon. Yeah, Ekdal's coming off. It looks like Brown is the, uh, the change here. So, whether that's going to be a move to... Uh more of a back three where the burger drops in there and, and supports the defence we shall wait and see but Brownhill certainly looks like the man that said the ball has gone up with the 18 and the uh, the 8 on it so it looks like that will be the change and Ekdal is back on his feet but he's walking off very slowly and very gingerly he gets a good round of applause from the uh, Turf Moor faithful but uh, forced into another change so three changes so far for the uh, home side Say, maybe a little bit of a, a reshuffle here. We wait to see. Just Brownhill takes the uh, captain's armband as he comes onto the uh, the field and gives the message as to what we're changing here. So hopefully, from company to Bellamy to Brownhill, we should have got the message through. Hopefully, I haven't seen a piece of paper out yet. No, so no, I was, I was waiting, waiting for that. <laughs> I was waiting for the shopping list to appear, but it hasn't so far. VAR check, by the way, at Brentford. If we don't mention it already, two 0 up uh, at, uh, as it stands at the moment. Could be that he goes back to one and Sheffield United maybe can take the momentum of the game if it ends up being that Brighton are pegged back to being only one goal to the good. But Burnley now just waiting to see if how this formation and how these changes really really solidify for, for Burnley. Ball looking for Rodriguez up top. Chases it down and pressure being put on to Verbruggen. The Brighton goalkeeper just clears his line into Baleba. First touch into the path of Welbeck. Does well to keep it down. Brownhill does win the ball though. Plays it into Unabair. He's got Foster coming forward. Looks like he'll pass it. But he drops for Rodriguez on the edge of the area. Good shot. Curling effort. But really good save by Verbruggen. And just as that chance happens, we are halfway through the second half. Three quarters of the way through the 90 minutes. And take us as through to full time. And Stephen, I'll pass you over to him now. Yeah, thank you. It's been a uh, sharp first uh, period of the uh, the second half hasn't it it's uh, ticked by pretty quickly particularly if you're a Burnley fan I suspect because you'll feel like the time is running away a little on this uh, game for you and it comes with the results kind of going your way at the moment at the bottom end of the table and it's time to try and turn this one point into three but as it stands it remains at nil nil right and if uh, I failed to find the net in seven of their last 15 league games after scoring in all the first 16 league matches. Confirmation, by the way, that Brighton's goal has been uh, Brighton's goal. Brentford's goal has been ruled out uh, by VAR, and that remains at Brentford 1, Sheffield United 0, and Sheffield Wednesday have got 1 0 up at Hillsborough against Stoke. By the way, Birmingham went 3 0 up against Coventry earlier on, so uh, plenty happening at the bottom end of the championship at the minute. Huddersfield dragged into the bottom three as it stands as they are 0-0 as Burnley uh, try and tidy up defensively and have to be quick here before Muric can get in there just waiting to see how they've reorganised at the back they've had possession at the other end of the field since the uh, change was made Burnley so we haven't properly seen how they've 
restructure, but they've lost possession here as Brighton come forward. They have four upfield for this one. The ball slightly behind Jao Pedro has to wait for it. Drives towards the penalty area into the path of Baleva. He allows it to run for Igor down that left hand side. Back to Baleva. Gross, corner of the penalty area, left hand side. Wants a pass through, will chip it in instead, but Murich is there quickly. Gets out to the edge of his six yard box, makes the save. Complains about the little arm that he got on the back of the head, I think, from Adingra as the two of them went for the battle. And again, disappointing ball into the box, simple for Murich. Yeah, it's, it's gross again, and it's he, just, I think, because you know how good he can be from, from specifically set pieces or dead ball situation and crosses from open play. But Murich, he's not had been tested this afternoon, really, but he's been absolutely fantastic in the command of his area, coming out, getting the ball, whether it be from a cross like that or a corner, and he's set Burnley off here, the flying down the right-hand side. And certainly are as uh, Foster drives into the box, chips the ball back, but again he chips it into an area where there's nobody there and Verbruggen can just wander to the edge of his six-yard box, clutches the ball down. 20 minutes left to go then, Burnley nil, Brighton nil as Craig Bellamy on the sideline in the absence of Vincent Company tries to plot a way for Burnley to find a winner in this game and take the vital three points towards the bottom end of the table. A horrendous home record so far this season it's the worst that they've ever had in the top flight in terms of defeats it isn't they have had worse seasons than this but uh, from a home point of view it's been a bit of a nightmare as the ball cleared long downfield by Brighton then could they create something well they can't they force back to Van Hecker but he comes uh, forward out of the uh, region on the edge of his own penalty area drops into Welbeck but he's only just inside his own half Brown although he's pulled up for a free kick on uh, the uh, Brighton striker Simon Hooper had a, a fairly leisurely uh, second half so far. It's been a fairly uh, even, comfortable game for both sides. No particular nasty fouls or anything of that nature. Nothing too controversial yet. Still time though, 20 minutes left to go. There's got to be something, there always is. Here's the ball is played for, for everybody to debate. There's an offside he has to give here as Balbeck comes back in from an offside position to try and pick up possession on the halfway line. So we see the uh, Burnley owners in deep discussion at the moment. Uh, American owners you may have seen on the uh, documentary that was uh, around last season showing uh, Burnley getting promotion. Their efforts to set them up for that. As Murich plays a right footed ball, long downfield, out into the left hand side, finds Taylor on a rare foray forward. He tries to battle his way past the defender, he does so into the box, chips it in, another poor cross though, straight to the near post. There's the Bruggen again. Easily tidied up, and he's, the, the, the quality of crossing to the box has been really poor from both sides. Yeah, I think it's been the story of the game, hasn't it? Just the delivery into the area. Taylor's a really good deliverer of the ball from that left-hand side, like you say. It hasn't really flown forward this second half much, but he had his chance there. Poor pass, and even Baleba there, he's trying to play that ball through, just over hits it, and it's just no one's been able to in that final third really create anything of of quality maybe foster can can now go defending from dunk but that's all that's missing is just that quality that final pass in the final third all it takes is one cross one pass and maybe one finish or, or a strike strike from from far out for, for something to happen and you're just waiting for that in this game and you hope that in the closing stages it just doesn't drop does the pace or the intensity where both sides don't really want to risk pushing forward for a goal in, in the hopes of then losing the game and coming away with nothing. Yeah, but a penalty call of the Etihad, Manchester City are the ones who are the beneficiaries of it at the moment, we shall see what happens with that, it will be checked of course and we'll see if somebody scores from it if it is confirmed, but in our game we look for a first goal of the afternoon, it's the only Premier League game so far today without a goal as the ball is flicked off the head of Van Hecker, drops to Dunk who has to just play it back under pressure to Verbuggen who's got plenty of time to play downfield, right footed up towards Welbeck, he flicks it on looking for Giao Pedro but it's in front of him and he's cleared away by Burnley, might drop to Brownhill, he can't take it down but he might get on the back of a short back pass, ball deflects off the keeper as he tries to clear, back to Josh Brownhill, it comes off his feet and rolls into the back of the net, it was a bit of luck that Burnley perhaps needed, well they've got it and they lead by a goal to nil. I mean, I think it's the luck that he's uh, the being the better side, I, I'd like to say, in this game. And he's very similar to a couple of weeks ago. I believe it was, well, it was in the Burnley game. It was last weekend where Maritz just clears it and it comes off of Dominic Calvert-Lewin. A very similar kind of player. Poor ball in behind. He just comes off Brownhill. Then Belemba just sells the Bruggen shot. He comes out, slides out to try and clear it away. 
bubbles back off of Brownhill, the substitute. He's come on and he's added that extra legs. He's added that maybe if that's a player who's been playing this full game, maybe they've just not got the legs. They haven't got the energy to get there. Brownhill, Burnley's number eight has, and they've, they've got that piece of luck. But we've said that it's been a bit scrappy inside the 18-yard box, and that's the description of a scrappy goal. But Burnley, Vincent Company, Craig Bellamy, they'll take it wherever they can get it. And as we said, results are really going their way this afternoon. That could end up being a really important goal in this relegation race in the Premier League. Absolutely, another important goal because <coughs> Manchester City look like they've confirmed the win over Luton. They now lead by three goals to nil. Uh, yeah, Erling Haaland is the one from the penalty spot. Surprise, surprise. But just checking if he was still on the field, which he was, and completes the well, not completes the scoring, but certainly completes the victory. You feel for Manchester City over Luton. So Luton losing by three goals to nil. Sheffield United a goal down at Brentford. Forest being held 2-2 by Wolves, and Burnley one nil up against Brighton. Burnley have got to be careful now as they defend a rather short back pass from Munich to deal with from Taylor. Unfortunately, not as short as the one from Belabor at the other end of the field. It led to Josh Brownhill's goal. The ball is picked up in midfield. Uh, Belabor rather is uh, brought down. A foul against Rodriguez. Still uh, 14 minutes plus stoppage time to go. An important goal at the bottom end of the championship. You can throw a blanket over everybody apart from already relegated Rotherham at the bottom of the uh, championship relegation battle. And Sheffield Wednesday have been pegged back at Hillsborough. Sheffield Wednesday 1, Stoke 1. It now stands. Birmingham 3 up at Coventry. And Huddersfield still 0 0 at Bristol City. As Brighton look to make a change. In fact, multiple changes here. Looks like we've got three changes to come. Mordor and Welbeck are uh, the first two certainly to go. We'll see who else is. Uh, Fatty and uh, Bonanotti will uh, come on in their places. I suppose not surprising, really. Roberto De Zerbi will look at it, excited goal down, need a little bit of something as we see a shot of the floodlights above Turf Moor. And the rain starting to uh, come down as uh, Adam Lallana appears as well. We haven't seen who he has come, off, come on for at the moment. He catches up by catching up at Ingra. He's the man who's gone off as a free kick from Brighton. He's into the penalty area, it's overhit. Although his dunk races into the box, but the ball from Gross is too far and just bobbles straight through and out of play for a goal kick. So Fatih, Bonanotti and Lalana on all positive changes, you would say, from a Brighton point of view. Yeah, all attacking changes, aren't there? Maybe that brings around a, a change of formation as well. You wouldn't think Edinger has been on that right-hand side holding the width. He's a really pacey wide wide player really good on the holding the touchline holding the weight from you'd like to think maybe the Lana will come in maybe when or not he'll go on the right hand side and the Lana will go into the middle fatty on the left pedro leading the line for brighton looking at it maybe it's a change of formation completely and maybe that's where brighton they're so fluid with how they play but burnley have a chance now good ball into the area and looking for the head of rodriguez falls into the arms of the bruggen but now it's about brighton they have to take the game to burnley and that could really play into the horse hands if brighton throw, throw players forward spacing behind long ball into either rodriguez or You've still got Foster or Bear on the pitch, and that could mean that Burnley, they're happy to sit back, counter-attack, and maybe get a second through Brighton for too many players forward, but Brighton, they have they just haven't been on it this afternoon so far, but you never know, those substitutions, as you say, they could bring some luck for the home for the away side. Yeah, you kind of feel that something has got to change, at least from a... Oh, what a mistake! Oh, the ball is in the back of the Brighton net, uh, Burnley net, I should say, and Murich has made an absolute howler. On this occasion, the Brighton fans behind his goal are delirious. They've got a, a goal out of nothing. It was luck at one end for Burnley that Brownhill scored. It's luck at the other for Brighton to take their equaliser. As Murich had possession, played the ball across onto that right-hand side. And we're just seeing a replay of elsewhere. Ball is played back to him inside the area. He takes his eye off the ball, doesn't control it. And it rolls straight into the back of the empty net behind him. It's a horror show. Uh, it's you, Burnley 1, Brighton 1. You just you feel so bad for Murray's there. But, I mean, maybe if you're Brighton, you feel that after the goal, you concede it was a bit of a lucky goal, if you will, with the Bruggen clearing it away, taking the deflection off. And it just doesn't get any prettier on second, third, fourth and fifth viewing, does it at all? And he's just a pass back. Murray's just, he doesn't even take his eye off the ball. I don't even know really... It's not like he looks up and the ball's passed back to him. He's not expecting it. He's 
trying to put his studs on the ball to stop the ball doesn't do that but Brighton are flying forward now looking to take the lead yeah they certainly are they are forward in numbers as well Belabor with the shot this time Murray's is right behind it and he makes the save on that occasion and the caption comes up 79 minutes Murich own goal well, Berg will be happy it's not gone down as his own goal in that sense but, <laughs> but that's a very limited uh, positive for the uh, the defenders he played the ball back wasn't over it there was nothing wrong with the back pass at all it's just an absolute howler from Murich who might as well have turned back picked up the rope and pulled up the relegation <laughs> trap door behind him jeez oh <laughs> my word dear oh dear oh dear from a Burnley point of view but Brighton happy they've got a point and uh, as you say they were lucky at one end was for Brugham's clearance under pressure it wasn't his fault the keeper he had to slide out for a short back pass and that was blocked away for Brownhill to uh, score the uh, first goal of the afternoon and the sound of a large clang behind Murich 1-1 10 minutes left to go can somebody well again we're back to where we started can somebody find a winner with 10 minutes left to go it's more important you feel for Burnley of course with the trapdoor opening uh, below them but the results are going for them. You know, that's the positive from a Burnley point of view. They've got to keep driving on here as the ball is played long downfield. Taylor will have to be quick. Bonanotti was there. Taylor has to keep it in play because he was under pressure. Did he do so? Yes, he did. Back pass to Murich. Everybody breathes a sigh of relief at Turf Moore as he clears it away on this uh, left-hand side. Berger then pulls it back again towards him right in front of goal. In fact, I was Berger. I'd be putting it to the side, personally, at the moment, just to play safe. And I'm not being facetious. That's a real thing. Is you try and give your goalkeeper some breathing space and play it out wide so that there's no danger. And he's putting it straight back towards goal. But fortunately, all is well as the ball is played on the left-hand side. It'll be picked up by Igor coming forward for uh, Brighton. Talking of horror shows, Igor the ball is up towards the halfway line Brett always in my head that when he gets the ball <laughs> Foster down the right hand side he's blocked off is he by Belabor as he brought down no the assistant was there perfectly happy with the challenge says there's nothing wrong with that as Luton have pulled one back against Manchester City by the way Manchester City 3 Luton 1 Ross Barkley with the goal defensive mistake apparently for Barkley to get in and pull one back for Luton but here come Brighton now all of a sudden their uh, tails are up, everything's happy with them as they drive forward in numbers all onto the right hand side, Lallana looks forward, can't find the ball into the area plays it out wide, he'll get it back on the corner of the penalty area but it's just played around at the moment, there's no pace and impetus uh, from Brighton because Burnley are back in numbers with 8 minutes left to go as they have uh, possession to the Seagulls uh, João Pedro turns away from a defender, rolls it into the pass and players uh, passing down the left hand side can he get across and he can't he finds Pascal Gross though on the edge of the box those two into play again shot comes in in the end straight down the chest of uh, Murich although he fumbles it a little and takes it to the second attempt Murich just needs to settle down again but Anotti was sniffing it out well he's probably offside anyway but Anotti doesn't really matter but the shot comfortable in the end for the keeper I mean really good run from Gross there he took away the two defenders from Fatim it made it really easy for him to take a touch and have a shot at goal, give him loads of breathing space to get it out of his feet, get a good touch. Brighton giving away the ball sloppily here and Brun Larson's got a chance. He's got the opportunity, hasn't he? Into the penalty area, tries to trick and turn his way past a couple of defenders, didn't really get too much support inside him. Clearance only goes as far as Brownhill, who's bouncing shot from distance, rattles into the chest of Verbruggen, who races to the end of his penalty area looking for an opportunity to get a quick ball out but he won't big goal at the top of the championship not right at the top it's not an Ipswich Middlesbrough one that one still remains 1-1 but Watford have equalised they were 2-0 down against Southampton it's now Saints 2 Watford 2 and a game without a victory today for Southampton you kind of think probably the top two has gone but still time still time in our game as well seven minutes left to go plus whatever the referee adds on there will be a I would say at least five minutes of stoppage time as Fatty chips the ball across the area to Lallana. First touch, not the best though. He can't find the ball into the area. It's cleared away, but picked up again by Brighton. Van Heck has it again. Finds a dunk as the press comes forward from Burnley. Trying to find a way to get back in front in this game. It's cleared downfield by Berger, but again comes straight to Brighton again. They're deep inside their own half as they play backwards and forwards. Uh, in midfield that spins around can they find space they can't at the moment but they can find possession Burnley on that right hand side for Foster who's playing wide on that right there's been some discussion about his different role and there's been some company said it's about flexibility more than anything else for this side 
to where players can be and how they can try and influence games while they're on the field. Here comes Berger up over the halfway line. Looking for some movement in front of him. He can't find a space at the moment and he has to check back. There's a bit of frustration coming in for Burnley now. They've got themselves in front and they've conceded in terrible fashion. But they have space as Brighton sit back in a defensive point of view. Ball forward up towards the draw. Bruno Larson tries to force it into the box. Brian dilly dally around the edge of the area. Finally clear it away. Long downfield as Jao Pedro will chase it. Can he keep the ball in play? No, he can't. It runs out on that far side. And it's out of play for a throw in as the rain now pours down over Burnley. We see Roberto De Zerbi and uh, Craig Bellamy. He went through on the uh, sideline as Norwich score a goal at Preston at Deepdale important goal for Norwich as they look to uh, secure a playoff place and it's now Manchester City 4, Luton 1 so it looks like job done, Jeremy Duck who has scored the fourth for Manchester City as a change comes here Trezor will come onto the field for Burnley and it's the man we've mentioned uh, more often than he would like in the uh, first half Jakob Brun Larsen who missed that absolute sitter in the first 45 minutes he was off the field, I suppose from that point of view it's fresh legs, try and do something uh, push forward and get some energy into this Burn uh, Brighton team and Burnley team late on in the game to try and influence it in whatever way they can now from the sideline because the pattern of play seems to be well established. Yeah, it's one of them. It's very similar to, I think, when Brighton have brought their fresh legs on as well. It's really improved their game. I think it's brought a more energetic second half in the last minutes when since Lallan has come on. And it's also added that bit of extra cutting edge in the final third just because the players have come on, they want to prove a point been sat on the bench and they want to come on and prove that they should have been starting it as well Brighton to have the ball though and they're looking the better side coming into the closing stages yeah up into the area Lallana flicks it on his head tennis inside the box Jao Pedro's in there flying effort from Ansu Fati ball cleared away onto the right hand side where uh, Odebert who had kind of forgotten was on the field actually he's had no possession at all down that right moving forward for Burnley he's blocked off this time he'll go down hunting the ball as Belieber brings it forward not the best pass from him inside Lallana picks up possession he can't find space either at the moment it's Brighton who will come forward down that left hand side Pascal Gross pointing where he wants players to go he takes it himself he's blocked out manages to force it into the area for João Pedro he's trodden on the ball though as he loses possession Brownhill battles into him and wins back possession for Burnley Odebert picks it up now and drives out of the back uh, four but then he's blocked out good turn from Ego on that left hand side, there's still a Brighton player down in the box as Fatty comes forward, plays the ball to Lallana, central position, 20 yards out, Lallana circles into the penalty here, drops the ball off, strike comes in on that left hand side, from João Pedro, but it's wide of the uprights. Just too many Burnley players back, isn't there, and making it really difficult, João Pedro, he gets his head up and there's a little bit of space, but you'd also would have said that if that strike's going on goal, that there were too many Burnley players, it would have taken a deflection or... or it would have taken a real wonder strike to, to go in and have to go in the top corner or Murich would have probably likely saved it as well and just put in the 88 minute, two minutes left to be obviously added time as well. Looks like if any side's going to get a goal, it will be Brighton. Even when Burnley are getting the ball out of bed, has got away from his player a few times and trying to just drive through that Brighton midfield and create some space and create just some time and some energy for, for his teammates and it's just not coming off Brighton are really controlling this game and they've really just taken it away from, from Burnley since that own goal for Murich I think they've, they've got on the ball they've passed it around they've just taken it away really from, from the horse and if anyone's going to come away with three points it's looking more likely it'll be the away side so some more movement on the Brighton bench but at the moment it's the Seagulls moving forward into the Burnley half well, and in fact he's got crowded out of it and lost possession as uh, Asignon gets away from a couple of challenges he races forward, challenge comes in it's a hard one, referee though seems to be happy to play on as sort of bear plays the ball forward, Rodriguez though gets his feet in a tangle can't clear it away, then he fouls Van Heck and it will be a free kick there is still a Burnley man down at the moment it's a rather frantic uh, spell of play that leads to nothing in the end other than, <laughs> other than a free kick inside the centre circle after all that yeah, just, just no one get the foot on the ball there, could there? Again, maybe the weather is an element, and I can't get, oh, it's just the, the pitch is just so wet. But it will be Shao Pedro coming off. Oh, man, he's coming on. So, Shao Pedro, his race has run. He's not, had the, he's not had the worst game in the world, but he hasn't really shown anything so far. But long ball looking for the Brighton man. Marich flying out of his goal as per usual. Better touch there than he had for that own goal. And 
again, he's looked confident and then he's looked shaky at times as the, the Burnley goalkeeper. But whether or not he does well to win it and Brighton could find some space in behind. Yeah, and they've got possession here. Challenge comes in. They look to see if he's pushing the back. Referee says not. It's a good tackle by Odebear and off he races downfield. A couple of options in front of him. That's a rather overhead pass. Asignon will keep it in, but he's down by the corner flag now. As we tick into the 90th minute, Burnley won, Brighton won. Ball chipped in, off the defender, behind for a corner. And that was probably the best that Burnley could hope for in that kind of scenario down there. Yeah, he was really stuck on that right-hand side. Really good defending by Igor. He made it tight, made it sure that he couldn't really get past him. Igor's really strong, really fast kind of defender. He made it difficult. And just to about take the 90th minute, just waiting for added time. And like you say, best really opportunity now for Burnley set-piece. Just, just put a good ball into the area really make it dangerous for for the away side to deal with let's put a good delivery in for the first time in this game from a corner and let's look to try and regain our lead late on in the game yeah we shall see this uh, play will get back underway and a yellow card for is that for Bellman for arguing in terms of that not quite sure we shall see as Brentford it appears have gone 2-0 up against Sheffield United that we may be VAR our checks of other things they've already had one goal ruled out, but as it stands at the moment, in stoppage time, it is Brentford 2, Sheffield United 0. So Sheffield United losing, Luton losing, Forest drawing, Burnley drawing at the bottom of the table. As the ball chipped into the area from the corner, easily headed away by Van Heck. It'll drop out there to Asignon, who plays it back out onto that right-hand side. Trezor comes back inside, nowhere quickly to go forward, though. At least they have possession on their right. Trezor whips the ball in too far, though, and easily straight into the hands of the Bruggen who looks out for a roll out can't find one five minutes to go then six minutes of stoppage time to be played and we're a minute into it Manchester City get a fifth against Luton as well so that game is well and truly done and dusted as we expected uh, after the 3-0 lead that Manchester City got themselves into they pull one back City have re-established their dominance as Brownhill uh, gives away a free kick the scorer of the goals, two strange goals for you to watch on uh, match of the day or on your devices later if you've not seen them. First one when Brownhill charged down uh, the Bruggen's attempted clearance after a short back pass to the Brighton keeper and then a nightmare for Murich. So got a back pass from Berger, totally miscontrolled it and the ball rolled behind him into the empty net. So the ball is played forward downfield all of a sudden the space the flag has stayed down for the moment as Fatty races down keeps the ball in play into the penalty area rolls it back in good save from Murich as the player came in at the near post it comes back to Mahoney he'll come out wide on the right hand side in fact I think the flag may have gone up anyway for the initial offside so maybe Fatty was offside Murich didn't know that and he makes it yeah we've seen the replay yeah, clear offside down that left hand side against Anthony Fatty but Murich did make a decent save when the ball came in yeah, Murich didn't know, did he? Really good save, and even if, like you say, the, the linesman didn't didn't put his flag up and kept it down, really good save from the goalkeeper there. And I mean, when, when the ball was played, because there was so much space for Fatty to, to go and get it, I thought Murich would have flown out of his goal and swept up. He's done that all afternoon, so I was kind of expecting Murich to, to do that from this free kick, though. He's just going to lump it long and... Burnley, they're going to try and get bodies forward, they're going to try and just be a bit more direct in these last few minutes, we're just approaching halfway, three minutes of the six of added time, and looks like it'll be a draw, on paper, I think Burnley, you would have said a draw at home to Brighton, that's a good result, it's not that it's a terrible result, but as you've alluded to, with how the results have gone elsewhere, it could have been a really important three points for this, this, for this afternoon for Burnley, whereas a draw isn't the end of the world, but as you said earlier, the running out of time, three points are going to be really important this afternoon. Absolutely. And although Murich has almost lost it again and the pressure from Mahoney, fortunately he manages to extract himself from the uh, striker's attention and get the ball away. But we are four minutes, uh, three and a half minutes, I should say, of these six have been played. And if it stays uh, like this, of course, uh, Burnley would still be six points away from Nottingham Forest because Forest is still drawing 2-2 two, two deep in stoppage time at the city ground against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Ball cleared long downfield by Burnley, too far though in the end. Will be tidied up and will be Verbruggen comes towards the edge of his penalty and then plays it out right footed. That's not a good clearance from the keeper though. Gives the ball straight back to Burnley. Well they are kind of on the half well and Sister tries to play the ball long downfield up towards Trezor who's easily beaten in the air but it's by Veltman but it's not fully clear still bouncing around deep inside the uh, Brighton half 
ball over the top for Trezor down the left hand side. Needs movement in front of him. Rodriguez makes a run that opens up a little bit of space. Played back across into a central position. Chipped over onto that far side by Cullen. Here comes Odebert inside. Oh, he's got three players in the middle. He's got to get it on target. We'll get it into the area, he gets right underneath it, miles over the crossbar, full time at the Etihad, Manchester City 5, Luton 1, but that's a disappointing end. Yeah, it was just, again, like, like you say, maybe those three players in the area, if you put that in the back of that, you'll just hold your hands up and go, well, yeah, of course, I don't mind you putting, having a shot there, if you're going to give us the lead, but when you've got so many players in the area, so many committed forward players you just want him to beat his man go down the right hand side whip a ball in and look to go that way and we've got a minute left of the six alley time and Brighton they're looking dangerous coming down the left hand side yeah, it's all down that left for Brighton is it the ball is chipped into the area half cleared towards the edge of the box Paleba has to check back inside under pressure from Rodriguez helping his defence and suddenly there's space on that left hand side ball across into the area Berger hooks it away from inside the box but it's straight back to Brighton again with Igor as he finds Gross, Brighton turning on the pressure in the last minute or so of stoppage time, but they've lost possession here. Rodriguez gets a foot in, and Burnley should be able to clear, but it's rather frantic defending from Burnley now rather than anything else as we're into the final, well, at least 30 seconds, and maybe a little bit of additional stoppage time, but we've played five and a half minutes of the allotted uh, minimum of six. As Brighton are now penned back inside their own half of the field forward by Dunk just launches it down there sees if he can create something it's headed away onto the halfway line where challenges come flying in Bonanotte gets a toe end full time at Brentford Brentford 2 Sheffield United nil Burnley have possession on the halfway line again but that's poor ball forward over hit straight back to Brighton again forward they come full time at the city ground Forest 2 Wolves 2 still 1-1 one, one in our game as we go over the six minutes of minimum time and still we play ball forward up towards the edge of the box Bonanotte can't get space ball breaks on the edge of the area it's forced through into the box but Berger is there to tidy up for Burnley he's the one last chance for the home side to get the ball forward they'll have to be quick if they do Trezor gets away from one challenge he's dragged back by about three different Burn uh, <laughs> Brighton players and Mahoney I think is the finally the one who will have the uh, yellow card against him As Southampton go 3-2 up in a dramatic game in the championship late on but is that the last chance and will they have an opportunity just to lump the ball into the area here as Muric comes up towards the halfway line he will be desperate to create something in this uh, final minute Lewis yeah if he could be the one who puts the ball onto someone's head and they put it in the back of the net really can just spare his blushes from this afternoon and just over a minute played of the six now they've got all the players forward Brighton holding a high line poor ball for Muric and that'll probably be the end of it there and that is the end of it there as Verbruggen uh, takes the ball in his hands both goalkeepers will be frustrated by the nature of the stra strange goal well very strange goal at one end and a slightly strange goal at the other but it finishes all square at Turf Moor the final score is uh, Burnley 1 Brighton 1